shifting over to some other African countries so we can find out what the figures exactly are and what the situation is on the ground. So I have Eric Kawa, who's a journalist from Sierra Leone. Thank you so much for joining us, Eric. I believe I also Thank have you so much, Nathaniel Latte, and he's a PhD student in clinical biochemistry in Mexico. They've also recorded some numbers. And so, Nathaniel, thanks for joining me as well. And I, yeah, I, I believe I have another one from Togo. Uh, this is Rodrigue Ahego. He's a director of publication, Panorama Newspaper Togo. Thank you as well. So I'll, I'll start with you, Eric. Can you please update us on the numbers in your country, uh, Sierra Leone? Uh, is it really two, just two cases? Yes, as it is right now, uh, Sierra Leone only has two cases. And I can tell you that it happens to be the last West African country to record a case of the COVID-19. So we remain at two, but more contact tracing is on the way, uh, being on that the second case that we recorded is an independent one that wasn't linked to the first one. Okay, so the first one, how, I mean, is the person someone who traveled into the country? Can you give us details on that as well? Oh. All right, so the first person is said to be uh, someone who traveled from France. Uh, he came on board uh, 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 one of the international flights, and then he came to the country on the 16th of uh, uh, March. And then he was on the quarantine, being observed for a while. And on the 31st, uh, after a lot of uh, uh, series of uh, tests, then he confirmed to be a negative case. So okay. that is how he contacted the disease. Okay, Rodrigue, uh, it says here that Togo has recorded... 39 cases with 17 recovered. Is that really true? And what's the situation like in your country? Rodrigue, um, I, I'm not sure I can hear you. So, so you hold on. I'm trying to... Okay. Having a bit of an audio challenge with Rodrigue. We'll, we'll try again. But let me come to Nathaniel, who is in Mexico. Hello, Nathaniel. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. All right, and I hope you are safe, just like our other journalists as well. You are a clinical biochemistry student in Mexico. Are you on lockdown in the country, and what is the situation like there? All right, so um, currently we are not on an official lockdown, but um, almost everything is um, shutting down. We are on a one-month vacation, which... Is supposed to end uh, the 20th of this month, but we expect that that will be extended because we are now recording um, more cases. Okay, if you say you're on vacation, that means that there's still the freedom to move about, but what? No, exactly. no education, no work. Um, there is work, but uh, no education. Okay, so all schools have shut down, but even with over a thousand cases, I know that your country declared a health emergency. E exactly. Explain that to me, because if there's a health emergency and there's no lockdown, how then is your country, is, is Mexico actually managing the situation? Uh, as a matter of fact, when this uh, pandemic was declared, um, our um, health authorities at first uh, were not um, very uh, serious with, with it, but eventually they had to declare this emergency to restrict movement. So they um, have this public education uh, to advise people to only make uh, important travels. So as we speak now, even though there is no official lockdown, uh, many businesses have shut down. And like I said, uh, schools are on vacation. Okay. Let me come back to Rodrigo and see if I can hear him this time around. You are updating us on numbers in your country. Can you please go ahead? Oh, it looks like we're having a bit of a challenge with Rodrigue. We can't seem to hear you still. I'm not sure what the problem is, Rodrigue. Uh, but I'm going to go back to Eric. Eric, so is there a lockdown in Sierra Leone? Because yeah, if it's yeah. just two cases, people would assume that that's not too many cases. And so we can still manage having people move around. Is there that freedom to move around? Well, uh, as I'm saying right now, yeah, uh, about a few days ago, the uh, Minister of Defense, who happens to be the head of the uh, COVID-19 team, uh, declared that there will be 73 hours of lockdown, three days of lockdown, which will start on Sunday. However, though, medical doctors yesterday gave uh, a press uh, a statement noting that three days is uh, very small for uh, a lockdown, especially considering the fact that the incubation period of the COVID-19 will have to be between two and 14 days, as the case may be. 
So they're saying uh, two, uh, three days is too small. Or whilst another set of people are saying the economic situation is that hard and people will not be able to make ends meet, especially if there is an extended lockdown. So, so far, these is among few measures that the government has taken. And they're saying uh, as the situation goes on, more uh, actions will be taken. So maybe we're expecting to get more lockdown. But as of now, there have been restrictions on a lot of uh, things like uh, religious gatherings, social gatherings, and schools and other learning institutions closed on the 31st of March. So so meaning uh, so far um, the country is at this uh, moment and people are preparing for a lockdown come the weekend. Is there an issue of panic buying ahead of the lockdown? Well, yes, somehow there's a little bit of panic. People are very much more uh, concerned about how exactly will it be like, uh, especially people are concerned about the, the livelihood, making ends meet. That is one uh, issue. But again, I would say that sadly that uh, there are a set of people who do not still want to believe in the issue because uh, uh, Sierra Leone, like many other African countries, are having issues of politics being mingled with so many national issues. So whenever it's about national issues, you first get aside uh, putting things into politics and also uh, people having their different perspectives. Mm. So as of now, people are like prepared, but there is fear grip the nation in uh, some uh, uh, people as well. I can imagine. I mean, coming back to Rodrigue, um, he is a journalist from Togo where they've recorded 39 cases. Rodrigue, try communicating with us this time. Hopefully we can hear you. Can you update us? I think you can hear me now. Yes, loud and clear. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, I can say that in Togo, uh, we have, uh, as today, a uh, 39 confirmed case, mm. and 20 active case, uh, 17 uh, uh, they have... Uh, recovered? Say, uh, they are not... They are recovered. They are health so they are held, and we have uh, two deaths, one journalist and uh, one uh, person who works in the office of the president of the Republic. Wow. Is there a call for the president to undergo testing, especially since one of his people has uh, been confirmed positive and has lost his life? You know, we, we have uh, something here in Togo. Every information contains with the president and uh, with all the governments is like uh, 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 it's not so uh, easy for us to get the, the, this information. So what we know is that uh, uh, those persons who were in contact uh, with the continuous and uh, the death uh, place in uh, isolation or quarantine. So uh, we can say that so the uh, to protect uh, all these people do not affect those who are sick. Okay, is the country under lockdown as well, or are you allowed to move about freely? Uh, you know, since uh, one week now, uh, are closed. Uh, everything is closed, uh, but in the uh, offices, they, they are still working. They are still working. Okay. They allow them to, to put uh, uh, some position to wash their hands and uh, cover their mouth and nose and uh, also put the gun to their hands. Work. Okay. But we suppose that it's not, uh, it's not good. Because if you see, like on the road, you see taxi, they're still uh, uh, picking four, five persons. You see Muto with two, three persons. Wow. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. And uh, we, uh, I myself published two letters, open letters to the government to try to put eyes on this. You know, every disposition is still on paper. They on paper. Okay. They don't. They are not in practice uh, doing something to uh, protect the, the, the people. So we are working hard to 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 okay. help them to uh, what I can say to be uh, all right in the application. Okay, so that means that there's no issue of social distancing in your country because you're saying that what about three four people uh, can mount a motorbike and it's okay. 
Oh, it's very dangerous. You know, uh, okay, uh, yesterday uh, the government said that uh, motor are not going to work again. And, All right. Or as for the taxi, they're supposed to have uh, three passengers uh, with the driver okay. and four, and the bus of uh, 15 places must uh, stop at uh, eight and, and other stuff. Okay. Uh, but you know that. Uh, from the beginning, the government was not free. Mm. People are not going to stay. Like, uh, since yesterday, uh, we stopped night activities between the uh, hours in the okay. night to uh, six o'clock in the night to six o'clock in the morning. Okay. Like, yesterday, you see people are going and coming, and it was not easy. Wow. Nathaniel. It must be difficult being a Ghanaian student in Mexico at a time like this. I'm sure you probably wish that you were home, um, you know, with family and all of that. Has there been an op opportunity to get tested? Is there an issue of mass testing in Mexico? Um, no, I think uh, Mexico isn't doing mass testing. Um, there's no issue of mass testing. And um, the, um, are only testing... Uh, people who uh, present with symptoms or people who uh, might have encountered people who have been tested positive, like we see contact tracing. Uh, contact tracing. So, in effect, we are not doing mass testing. Okay. What about Sierra Leone? Any issue of that sort? And how is the frontline staff managing the situation? Are they helping as much as possible? Are they even ready? Are there PPEs for them and all of that? All right, so uh, one of the key things uh, when the president even made the, the announcement of the first case was that there was a, a challenge with regards to getting uh, these materials, which could be uh, very vital in terms of this fight. And then but the, ministry, the military and other security forces are on the alert and then they are taking actions as they could do. And, uh, but it's quite significant to note that it's very much more challenging considering the fact that the health system here uh, actually suffered during the Ebola outbreak. So mm. it's very challenging and many people are looking uh, forward to seeing uh, more actions taken. And with regards to testing, uh, when the first case was recorded, there were a lot of uh, contact tracing with regards to the uh, people who uh, actually got uh, into uh, contact with them being uh, primary and secondary cases. So there were a lot of contact tracing and tests were done so far. And um, uh, but uh, still it's going on and becoming so challenging considering the fact that the second case was an independent case that wasn't linked to the first one. So many of the contact tracing that were done were mainly linked to the first case. And then there are a lot more challenges now uh, tracing the second case that was also recorded. Okay. Nathaniel, quick one before I let you all go. There's been an issue of methylated spirits, um, you know, replacing hand sanitizers. And we're hearing that it may not be the right uh, thing to use at this point. Is that true? Yes, I would say um, yes, and I would say no. Um, so with the use of methylated spirit, you need to consider um, uh, one thing. So there is always a standard for uh, preparing anything, and the World Health Organization standard for preparing uh, alcohol-based and sanitizers are that you need um, an alcohol, in this case, isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol, and you need hydrogen peroxide, and you're going to need a moisturizer like okay. um, a glycerol. Okay. Now, and of course, uh, distilled water. Now, um, you need to know the composition of methylene spirit before you talk about it being a, sub a substitute for alcohol in the uh, making of sanitizers. Now, first and foremost, we need to take note that methylated spirit varies with composition from uh, a particular producer to another producer, even from country to country. All right. Um, one important component of methylated spirit is methanol, or what we call methyl alcohol. Mm -hmm. And this compound in methylated spirit is a, a, around 10%. Okay? Mm -hmm. And... This compound um, is in, it's 10% in methylated spirit, and that 
makes um, the uh, World Health Organization or the uh, CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, declare methylated spirit as not acutely toxic, meaning that um, when you are exposed to methylated spirit for a short period of time, it is not toxic. But prolonged exposure to methylated spirit may have toxic effects. For example, it may cause blindness. Mm. So if you want to talk about using methylated spirit as replacement for alcohol in the making of alcohol-based hand sanitizers, we need to uh, be very cautious about that. It's just like telling me you are a sea man, you are at sea, and you are thirsty. Are you going to drink the sea water because the sea also contains water? Of course not. Okay. All right, all right. Thank you so much. Nathaniel Latte is a PhD student in clinical biochemistry uh, currently in Mexico. And also we've been speaking to Eric Kawa, who's a journalist in Sierra Leone. And Rodrigo Ahego is the director of publication Panorama Newspaper Togo. Thank you, gentlemen, for speaking to us on COVID-19 360. And so then for the... Um, the supermarkets that are using ventilator spray, because sometimes when you walk in there, that's actually what they give you to sanitize your hands. Maybe this is um, a reminder that it may not be the best option for us. We'll be back as COVID-19 360.